Thank you to our friends at Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Should you have big dreams? Of course you should! Should you dream of building a mansion on the ocean if that's your thing? Yes. Should you dream of the <laughs> log cabin? Yes. If you want a Lamborghini or the new Ford Bronco, should you put? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. If you want the family, if you want the body, should you think about? Yeah, absolutely. Here's where everybody goes wrong. You dream about the end. You make this gorgeous collage of all this stuff that has nothing to do with your current life. <laughs> that literally, as you're sitting in your studio apartment, and you're looking for a job and you're staring at a mansion going someday, <laughs> it's going to make you feel like a loser because the gap between where you are and where you want to go, it seems insurmountable. And so what happens based on the research is when you only visualize the end game, it's demotivating. Mm. At first, it's really fun to like have a bottle of wine and make your like collage. I'm going to visualize, I'm going to slap this up. There's my vision board. It's fabulous. Law of attraction, baby. Come on. I'm going to think about it. It's going to come to me. Okay, I've been doing this for two days. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm still in this apartment with the cat box that needs to be changed. The way to visualize properly is to visualize the bridge between where you are and where you need to go. And particularly the horrible stuff. Visualize working a day job and telling your friends that you're not going to go out tonight because you're right. working on something. Visualize making cold calls and being told no. Visualize not going to that party because you're staying in on a Saturday and not going to the barbecue because you're putting in the work. Visualize sitting at a seminar and learning from other people. Visualize watching YouTube videos. Visualize your first ever course failing miserably. Right. Literally, that's the sort of thing that you want to visualize yourself doing and pushing through because that's going to help you do the work. As you will start to realize you are walking by an entirely different world every single day because you're not looking for it. There are opportunities, there are signs, there are mile markers on your path that you are literally tuning out. And we can all sit in this moment and look back and see how the dots of our life connect us here. You start to ground yourself in the idea that this too is a dot on the map of your life and it is leading you somewhere incredible. Law of attraction is simply your thoughts become things. Mm -hmm. And it's true. We've talked all about how when you have a negative self-talk, it tends to draw more of that to you. I think about it like lint in a dryer. Once negative stuff starts to collecting, it uh -huh. collects a lot more. So here's what everybody gets wrong about manifesting. Everybody, at least kind of in the mass market, what you're trained to think about when you think about manifesting is vision boards. Mm -hmm. And when you hear the word vision boards, you think about the big stuff. So let's use your example of the marathon. The vision board would be Lewis crossing. The arms out of the yeah, metal. The, yes. the metal. Yes. Exactly. High fives. Yeah, High fives. I did it. Yes, I did it. Exactly. That will not help you. Because when you hit mile 13 on the actual race and it is sleeting rain and it feels nothing like that thing on your vision board, you're going to start a negative dialogue. I can't do this. My knees hurt. This is not what I thought it was going to be. I'm not ready for this. I didn't train for this. And you are going to tank yourself. What you do by visualizing the bridge is you train your nervous system and your mind to do the hard work. So you should visualize not crossing the finish line, but what is it like to be at mile 12 when your batteries run out on your earbuds? No, I'm serious. And you keep going. What's it like when your shoelace breaks and now your heel is lifting and you're starting to get a blood blister at mile 17? What's it feel like when you wake up and it is pouring rain and you visualize yourself running anyway? That way, when you visualize the work, you are preparing your body for it, so you're not resistant to it when it comes. And so you are literally building up almost like this resilience and this muscle inside of you to do the work to get the thing. So yeah, create the vision board, but make sure in addition to crossing the finish line, you have somebody running in the rain. You have somebody who, you have an alarm clock that says 513. You have, you know, these images that show the mm. stuff that you don't want to do. So like for people who want to launch a business, for example, like a lot of people that I'm sure follow both of us are dying to launch a business or interested in being an influencer, social media or making money online. And what you visualize 
are the checks or you visualize the money you're going to make or you visualize how cool it's going to be when you're a lifestyle entrepreneur whatever yeah. the hell it is don't do that i am constantly training my mind to work for me and there's this little trick that i talk about in the book that is all sort of the beginning of having a high five attitude mm -hmm. and a high five attitude is the ability to catch yourself when you're going mentally low and to flip yourself back up into a high five attitude okay the thing that i know to be true is that you cannot control the things around you you can't control what's going to happen you can't even control how your nervous system might respond or what thoughts might pop into your head but you can always choose what you do next and what you make it mean right and so that's where all the power is we've talked a lot about negative self talk and part of the reason why negative self talk is so crippling is not only because you've repeated it for so long and now it's a pattern but it's also because you have a filter on your brain called the reticular activity system this puppy is the keys to everything and and it's remarkable that uh, most of us have never heard of it we've experienced it but we don't know how to use it to our advantage so the RES imagine a hairnet on your brain only it's like electric meaning it's alive okay now the RES has one job and the job is block out 99% of what's going on and let in 1% of what's going on our brains at this moment in history are having to process about 34 days mm. worth of cell phone data in one day. It's crazy. And so your RAS has a monster job. It's like a bouncer at a bar. Mm -hmm. You're not coming in, you can come in. There are only four things that automatically get through the bouncer in your brain, the RAS. Number one, your name. So you've experienced being in a crowded place and somebody's like, you think you hear Lewis and you're like, huh, somebody call my name? That was the bouncer in your brain. The second thing that always gets let in is any threat to your safety. So there are loud noises all over the, all the time, but only ones in close proximity make you go like this. Mm -hmm. That was the bouncer in your brain letting it in. Okay. The third thing that gets let in is when you sense that your partner is interested in sex with you or somebody else. And the fourth one, and this is where, this is the billion dollar thing that everybody needs to know. The bouncer in your brain lets in whatever you think is important to you. So when you get intentional about telling your brain what's important to you, like I'm interested in a Tesla, your brain's literally like, oh, let's all, let all the Teslas in, come on in. Here's the downside to this. If you have told yourself that you are a bad person for the last 10 years, guess what your brain thinks is important? Examples that mean you're a bad person. Right. So I'm going to give you a very specific example. So I personally don't think I'm a bad person. I don't think I'm perfect, right. but I know I do my best. I mean well. I don't have that story about myself mm -hmm. at all. I used to, but I don't. Let's say I oversleep and I miss the dentist. I miss the dentist appointment. I'm like, ugh, I got to pay the 25 bucks. I got to reschedule that thing. That kind of blows. That's all I think. And then I go on. If my daughter, who constantly beats herself up and says she's a bad person, this is a real example, by the way, she oversleeps, misses a dentist appointment, and it becomes, see, I always screw everything up. Uh -huh. I'm a terror. I, I, I'm always messing things up. I'm a bad, like everything that gets let in confirms that you're right, right. a bad person. She finds proof and evidence. Yes, yeah. that's the bouncer in your mind. I'm here to tell you that when you get intentional about what you want to think about yourself, it changes in mm -hmm. real time what your brain lets in and what it doesn't. Yeah. That helps you with the other things that you're doing. The high five in the mirror, yes. the I'm not thinking about that, the pathetic mantra. Hey, you know, just because I missed the dentist appointment doesn't mean I'm a bad person. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can here. Give myself a break. Right. High five. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Shake it off. Get back in there. It, right, well, it's true, right? Right. Because it's these little things. Somebody cuts you off. Somebody reaches for the last thing of cereal that you wanted to buy at the grocery mm. store. You think it's like a sign that the world's out to get you. This is all your story and your mind skewing the world to prove all of the stuff you keep repeating. And the only way to get a handle on it is to start acting the opposite. Like high five yourself, even though you don't feel like it. Interrupt the crap that you keep saying. Put your hands on your heart and settle your body down. Mm -hmm.
All of these things are things that somebody does when they care about themselves, when they think they deserve to be treated with kindness, yes. when they think they deserve support, and when they realize they need it. It does begin with you. 2022 is the year of self-development, the year you finally buckle down and do what you've always wanted to. And with Babbel, your 2022 language goals can be reached in no time. It's as easy as un, deux, trois. I started Babbel at the beginning of the year to learn French. I've always loved the language and wanted to grow my skills this year. Babbel made it simple, fun, and easy to want to practice every day. Lessons are designed by real language teachers. No machine learning algorithms or AI here. You get to learn from real people with real experience. Babbel understands that not everyone learns the same way. That's why they give you multiple ways to learn the language, ranging from lessons, podcasts, games, videos, and live classes with top teachers. Babbel makes sure your learning is educational and fun. And that's not all. Babbel teaches you more than just the language. It teaches you about the culture, people, history, and so much more. Join Babbel today by checking out our link in the description, and you can get 65% off your subscription. Let Babbel help you reach your goals this year. Join now and see improvement in just three weeks. Babbel, learn a language and have real conversations.